And welcome back here to Live Now from Fox. Criticism growing tonight on the Biden administration's decision to withdraw troops from Afghanistan. Also coming from former President Donald Trump, he says that he had strong conversations with the head of the Taliban when he was president. Here's that conversation today on Hannity on Fox News Channel. Great deal. We worked on it very hard. Mike Pompeo, a brilliant guy, and many others worked on it endlessly. Uh, meetings with the Taliban. Of course, you have to meet with the Taliban. They're the ones that you're negotiating with. I spoke on numerous occasions to the head of the Taliban, and we had a very strong conversation. I told him up front, I said, look, before we start, let me just tell you right now that if anything bad happens to Americans or anybody else, or if you ever come over to our land, we will hit you with a force that no country has ever been hit with before. Meanwhile, evacuations underway to try to get as many U.S. Embassy members, United States citizens from Afghanistan. Here's Fox 13 Tampa with the latest on that. Now to the unfolding crisis in Afghanistan. The Taliban held their first TV interview since taking over, announcing amnesty for all Afghans and vowing to respect women's rights under Islamic law. The promises are part of a publicity blitz aimed at convincing world leaders and the people of Afghanistan they have changed. But many are skeptical. The last time the Taliban held power in Afghanistan, there were severe restrictions on women and violent enforcement of rules. The U.S. military is racing to evacuate thousands of Americans and our allies from Afghanistan. And our political editor, Craig Patrick, is following the rescue efforts and the growing panic in Kabul. Hi, Craig. Yeah, hi there. Yeah, the evacuation is focused on Kabul, and the Pentagon spokesman John Kirby confirmed that the U.S. military is not facilitating, not working on any evacuation or rescue efforts in any other part of the country because our military has its hands full at this point trying to manage the flood of refugees and Americans escaping from the capital city's airport. Well, there's been no hostile interactions uh, from the Taliban to our operations uh, at, uh, at the airport. The U.S. military is communicating with the Taliban fighters and warning that any attack on the evacuation effort would be met with swift retaliation. That appears to be enough to hold off attacks at the airport for now. And the Air Force provided this picture of refugees cramped into one of the flights out of Afghanistan. These are people that have helped our troops. We couldn't have done what we did the last 20 years if it hadn't been for them putting their lives on the line. So we owe it to them to get them out as soon as possible. Women and children fare the worst in those situations because they're much more vulnerable to trafficking, to other things. A thousand U.S. troops arrived Tuesday morning to help protect the evacuation operations. A fleet of C-17s are bringing troops in and Americans and Afghans have supported us out. Based on the staffing and flight schedules, the Pentagon says it's capable of running one flight per hour. As Taliban fighters fire shots and lash out at people on the streets, there are still thousands of Americans there. Our government estimates it's five to 10,000 Americans, as well as tens of thousands of Afghans who supported us and are now in serious danger. The Pentagon said August 31st is a goal to complete the evacuation, hopefully without taking fire from the Taliban. Are you confident with your planning that by the 31st you can get all those people out, or is that uncertain? Uh, what we're confident is that we're going to maximize capacity to the, to, to, to the degree that we can. You could get to five to 9,000 people out per day. Now, on that point, there were 640 Afghans in that C-17 in the photo released by the Air Force. Now, the Air Force and the Pentagon say they can do up to a flight an hour. You do the math, that's 15,000 a day. More than that, uh, far more than the estimate that you just heard. However, uh, different aircraft have different capacities, and one flight per hour appears to be the maximum based on the logistics and the staffing and the protection currently in place. Also, that end of this month deadline to complete the evacuation is not set in stone. They keep referring to August the 31st. However, uh, if there is not hostilities between the Taliban and U.S. forces and there are still people to evacuate, at that point the president would make a decision of whether or not to extend the evacuation beyond the end of this month. And forgive me if you said this, Craig, but they're coming to America? All the evacuees? 
America and third party nations. Many of them will be eligible to come to the United States. Many others will not, at least not right away, which is why we're working with allies and partners as well. So the Taliban said it's granting amnesty and that it vows to respect women's rights under Islamic law. How does that line up with what we're seeing so far? Well, based on the panic and the chaos we're seeing in the streets, it tells us the Afghan people simply do not believe that. And the Taliban leadership have said things very similar to that before and then acted brutally and very differently. And we're already seeing some indications of some striking and deteriorating changes in Afghanistan, which is something we'll walk you through breakdown coming up at six o'clock. All right. Thanks for that. Craig Patrick reporting.